uh, let me pull up some questions. Is everybody, I see questions in the, in the Q&A. Regarding a refi, I've seen trends of lenders scaling back on their LTVs and their appraisal numbers. Any insight on this? Are you talking about um, commercial lenders or hard money lender? I mean, are you, are you talking about for houses or um, for uh, commercial stuff? I mean, overall, essentially, yes. Like, like when you get into a downturn, right? Finding money from a lender is going to be difficult, right? But SBA, especially SBA, oh my gosh, if you take an SBA, if you take an SBA loan out on a storage facility right now, guess what? They're going to they're going to pay the first six months or not have you pay in the first six months, right? I mean, isn't that amazing? So I mean, a lot of people use SBA to find money for storage facilities, but you can even you can use hard money lenders, you can use private money lenders. So whatever but the thing is is yeah in a downturn money is harder so that's why we're focusing in the in the group coaching on finding private money lenders um to loan on storage facilities so um because you know because it is going to get harder and it's going to get more expensive right so let's just let's have all of our let's not have all of our eggs in one basket commercial loans will still be available they're just going to be a little bit higher SBO, sba loans will be available private money lenders will be available you know, so you'll have, there's a lot of ways to find money. All right. And I remember I got in on the upturn when there was no money, there was nothing. And I, I had to go out and find private money lenders. That's the only way I could have invested in real estate is if I had private money, because otherwise I would have paid 15 and five points or, you know, something like this. And I was like, screw that. So I just went out and started finding private lenders. And in my very first deals, I was paying like 10%, you know, and that was in the downturn. Okay. So you can always find money. Money to me is always just a mindset. It's always just a mindset. Okay. Um, trying to build capital. Awesome. How do you run comps or come up and come up with an ARV? So you have to, I mean, basically you have to go off of like, basically what you do is look around at all the storage facilities that are in the area. All right. And you have to figure out how, what they're charging, like competitive wise, like what are they charging as well versus yours, right? And then you have to say, okay, like what, like how much money could I, could I possibly make on this one storage facility that I want to put under contract or whatever. And so that's kind of have to, that's kind of have to do it because like you could have like basically right next to each other. We were talking, I was talking to somebody that was in our, our group coaching this past week and he has like, we had one guy had like a hundred units and the other guy had a hundred units. And this guy, he, um, he had like an older, it's like an older hundred units that didn't have like any paved asphalt, no gate around it, nothing. Right. It was just kind of like, you know, it, you know, it's eventually he said he'll do that. But for right now he's like, yeah, whatever. It's out in the country. It's fine. And then we had another, uh, the other saying like another, uh, or owner, that had a hundred units and it was like paved asphalt, really nice gate, really nice keypad. Well, guess what? Even though they're almost exactly the same square footage, the same size, it's gonna be two different prices, right? Because this one, like you, it, to pave an asphalt and to put this nice gate up and to put the security system in that he is and all that, well, yeah, that's like more expensive, right? So this, this one is going to be a completely different price than this one, right? So I think like he paid like $300,000 for his, right around $300,000. And this one paid um, like $450,000 or something. And it was like almost exactly the same size and everything. It's just two different types of storage facilities. So what I mean is that you have to get to know storage facilities. You have to like educate yourself on all the different types of secure of storage facilities. You have to know how much a gate's gonna cost, how much the, the, the security's gonna cost. And that's how you really evaluate something is, is because you can have two right next to each other, almost exactly the same size, completely different prices, just based on like all of the bells and whistles and how much they charge per month and how much they're making and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that's really honestly like a full, like that's why you would get into the coaching is to learn how to run comps and run numbers like that. Okay. Cause that's like a whole, that's like a whole day workshop to teach that. Okay. And yes, this is being recorded. Uh, okay. We got more chats here. Let's do this. Uh oh. Okay. 2.75 for residential, 39 years for commercial. Okay. What, what's the depreciation rate on storage facilities? Okay. There you go. You got it right there. 
Uh, oops, does the seller, does the buyer or the seller pick the title com company? I mean, honestly, like I try as the seller, I mean, I, I try to pick the, the, the attorney because like I know my attorneys and like they never, like the, the buyer or the, the seller is like, you know, they don't ever close like a deal, right? I'm closing like deals all the time. So my attorney kind of knows me. So I really kind of just push my attorney if possible. But sometimes they're just like, no, you have to use my attorney. Like I just closed on the one up here and they were like, no, you have to use my attorney. And I was like, fine, but it was a pain in the ass. You know, it's like, I wish I would have just used mine because it would have been like bing, bang, boom, I could have closed. But no, like this attorney doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me. I had to send all his documents and do all this stuff. And it was just like a pain in the ass. So use your attorney if you can, once you start getting into it over and over again, but otherwise, no. Uh, yeah, like you're gonna have to use their attorney, okay? Or title company, however, whatever one. Okay, cool, what other questions? what's the average size of a storage facility? It's like every size, every size from like 30, like you just said, like Heather's looking at like a 30 unit up to like hundreds of units, hundreds, a thousand units. I mean, and there's like huge big ones or whatever. So there's like all size, all different ones, okay? But essentially like if you wanna be a million dollars or less, you're gonna be, you know, um, a couple hundred units or less essentially is what you're gonna be like, you know, and then average like like a million dollars, like 50,000 square feet, like or less, but sweet spot's gonna be like maybe 15 to 20, 10 to 20 square feet, 20,000 square feet, something like that, okay? All right, good questions. Um, okay, any other final questions? Is there different search criteria for RV boat storage? No, there's not, Carson. Do the same thing I just told you. Okay, cool. What else? Anything else? Any other final questions? Anything? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, all right. So hopefully you go to my website. Just go to stacyrosetti.com. Check me out. And then I will see you um, at the next webinar. I'm having a couple more next week, so just pay attention, all right? I'm here for you, all right? Stay safe. Bye, guys. Stay safe. Stop share. All right. Thank you. Have a good night.